Okay, so here's where we're at with it. I'm taking the front of it off, and um, I've kind of taken it apart a little bit and then put it back together, so it's kind of in mock-up right now. But I wanted to show you um, the way these things go together. It's really pretty basic, amazingly. So, um, of course, the blower that I'm interested in is in there, and um, this whole front piece is on um, just by four screws but they're off now and I wanted to pull this off to show you how it comes off because you'll be amazed so the way the dryer works of course the, the, this has to stay still and that big round piece in the back there has to stay sta stand still so it actually kind of slides on this uh, felt washer here giant felt washer and so it, it rubs against this felt all day, every day as you're using it, which is shocking. And what surprises me even more is that the front part of the drum, of course the back part is on rollers, but the front part, here I was looking for, obviously something's been riding right on there, I was looking for front rollers, but there aren't any. It actually just rests on these rubber... Um, bushings kind of and they feel like um, the magic sliders like you slide furniture on carpeting but all these years it's just been rubbing on that that just amazes me that it hasn't I can't believe they did it that way but uh, there's the fan there's the blower but um, the way I'm looking at it here um, I'm trying to do a little detective work of course all I have to do is really turn it on and that will tell me but if you look at the vent screen so of course that hooks on right there and um, if you look at the lint screen it has lint on that side and of course this is the inside of the drum where the clothes are so for there to be lint on this side of the lint screen only it has to be sucking through there. So it sucks through there and then goes around the corner in that enclosure and then out that tube into the squirrel cage. And um, so that tells me that's sucking. And that's probably a good thing um, because, you know, theoretically all I would have to do is uh, cut a circular hole in the back of this whole thing and uh, it will just suck everything out. And something else interesting, the um, I'll take this the rest of the way apart in a moment, but back in there is the motor, the electric motor, and of course the question is whether it's brushless or brushed so it won't ignite the fumes, but this is a squirrel cage running independ independently. So it's not like a, oh, a desk fan where the air that it's blowing uh, blows the air straight through the motor. Um, this is separate. So as long as you can keep the motors separate from this squirrel cage, which is going to be sucking into that tube, uh, it doesn't matter. So, but I'm going to take this apart the rest of the way and get a really good look at that. So that will be the next scene. Okay, and here we go. This is what's inside of a dryer. I've taken the tub out and have no idea what I'm going to do with that now. But um, there's a look at the back wall. And you have another, the back felt um, washer, or what you want to call it, um, gasket. And then um, that belt right there was around the, the drum in the back. Went right there. And it was powered by the same motor. If you look back here, that's where it was being powered. And there's a little idler there. And so this motor was turning the drum and turning the blower, which is a sucker. But, oh, good grief, look how much lint is on that. 
you know, I, I would imagine these are brushless mo motors because just because of the lint thing. I mean, there's lint as much as they try to keep lint from getting everywhere. I mean, okay, so there's the coils, the heating coils in there. With this much lint lying around and all built up everywhere, gosh, it sure seems like that could ignite. And the same thing, if that's a brushed motor, then the uh, sparks, the arc, could ignite that as well. So I would hope that's brushless, but I don't know. Um, but this is really pretty straightforward. All I would have to do is cut a hole on the back of the entire enclosure. Oh, and by the way, this is what we're going to do. Just like that. We're going to have it um, on its side. Because if you're painting back and forth, uh, you want more room side to side rather than upright like that. Um, there, there was a there's a a guy who um, made a paint booth out of his uh, dryer, and I've forgotten his name, but there there is somebody who definitely did it. But he left the front on so that he has um, a door that he's um, working in. But I want it to be wide open like this. So. Mine's going to be wide open, but it's going to be set on its side like that. And so I think that all you're really going to have to do is get a hole into the back of the dryer. You know, maybe, maybe even use that one. And see what we can do here. So, that's what we're at, at here. I'm going to take more stuff apart and see what I can see. But I hope that motor will run fine on 110 because I definitely don't have 220 going to the shed. So we'll see. Okay, be right back. Okay, got that whole big giant round mess off the back and that was connected to the heating coils. That was, they wanted to all come off in one big piece. And then I took it apart afterwards. That's all out here now. And um, that shows you how it works. Look in here. There's your big heating coils. And so basically, this, um, this was connected in there. And uh, it just heats up. And as it's heating up, since that um, blower or sucker in the front is always sucking, so the heat can radiate through there and then um, kind of be sucked through the drum through this grate. That's pretty, pretty neat. Must be how all dryers work and then uh, blows through the tub and into that thing and through the blower or sucker and then out the chute. So um, that's how a dryer works. That's how this dryer works and that is um, pretty neat and that's the first time I've taken one apart. Of course this is the only thing I want so now I've got this big empty cabinet and I'll take this out next and decide and I start taking a look at what can be done with this. So that's what's coming out next. Okay, and so there it is. I finally got it out. It was a little tricky. Uh, it turns out there was a couple of bolts that were covered in lint. Couldn't find them. They were just covered in lint. And so I have taken the front cover of it off. And you can see this performs the function of a fan, kind of in reverse, sucking. Um, whereas a fan, uh, if you had it turned a around, uh, like a table fan, like blowing away from you, it would be sucking in and through it and out the back. But this one's sucking in from right here, then it sends is it down there, and into that tube, and then out the same way, it just bypasses the motor altogether which is exactly what I need. Now the only question now, of course I gotta clean this off, 
and um, then determine which particular but look at this mess of wires that was on there and um, I've got the schematic right there uh, it doesn't give values as for voltages but it, it shows as it came in from the 220 plug so I think that as long as I find a classic positive and negative I'm going to try to hook up 110 straight to it and you know see what happens uh, so at this point I have a big empty cabinet uh, what I'm thinking I'm going to I'm going to want to try to do is utilize that hole that's already started started but um, it's of course going to need a back panel um, because that's not going to be, it has to be in the middle otherwise all your um, paint is going to be sucked over to one side and so that wouldn't be good so I might just plug that and cut a new one right in the middle and then I will be mounting this right onto the back of the dryer there and it will be a sucker that sucks um, the fumes out of the cabinet and then I'll figure out how to direct it uh, from there but it's looking good so the next step is I'm going to be moving the cabinet into the shed and put it exactly where I need it to be and um, finish construction there because it's on my front porch right now I need to get it off here and then the motor I'll leave in the garage and I'll work on cleaning it up and testing it and trying to figure out exactly how to wire that up but this will do it for update one, the big teardown. Um, stay tuned for update two on making a dryer into a paint booth. So stay tuned and see you later.